Spectacles and eye frames are usually fairly unglamorous. Yet one company has managed to become the biggest player in this space, growing from an investment of 30 crores initially to 360 crores in three years. Meet Piyush Bansal, the 31-year-old that saw this opportunity and ran with it. He's young, ambitious, and if you spend just a couple of minutes with him, he's bound to convince you of the need to wear frames regardless of whether you need them. So Piyush, you're one of the few people who's actually managed to achieve yeah. scale in a single category. Yeah. How did you decide on eyewear? It was more to do with the newspaper article saying India is the blind capital of the world. 40% of world's blind population lives in India, while only 20% of the world's population lives in India. Okay. So we were, originally we were just a bunch of guys trying to do stuff on the internet and trying to make it, make a high impact and solve consumer problems. And the company always wanted to, what excited us was to work on things which would, which nobody else is working on and right. would be different. Right. And, you know, so this was an opportunity we tried and, you know, I think it, it was the right time and the right idea and we, you know, we said, okay, let's figure out and we started working on eyewear, period. Okay, so, so, so go back to what you said a little earlier that we were just a bunch of guys trying to do different tech stuff. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that and how you first started out. So I started out uh, 2008. I used to work in US at Microsoft mm -hmm. and then I just in October decided that I'm going to do something bigger okay. and more in terms of the value creation because I think the kind of problems I was solving there were a little bit more for mature audience mm -hmm. but I felt that there was something bigger that I wanted to do so just came back didn't really have a lot on mind mm -hmm. and uh, started out with in my house basement okay. and at that point we were working on I just graduated out of college so I just right. worked for a year so we worked for college students and we said when I went to college, I had a huge problem finding housing. Right. So let's build classifieds which is specific to a college. Mm -hmm. So like today you would see a quicker for Delhi, yeah. but that was more to do with let's find a quicker for, you know, Delhi University. Okay. So that picked up well. I mean, we were just two guys earlier, me and I got a developer and we're sitting out of my house basement and we started working on the idea. I used to go to Delhi University every weekend, talk to students, figure out what the problems they're facing and, you know, just yeah, it just okay. went on from there and that one person became two and we were just at some point I think we became about 30 people okay. trying to just solve that problem and it was, we were solving it pretty well right. I think right. and in that course some people joined so Amit Chaudhary who is one of my co-founders okay. now uh, joined me from BIT Mesra because he loved the problem and you know there was a point when the basement got full and part of the office was you know in the house yeah in the house and then one of the things that we were not enjoying is that this whole college student problem beyond the point i think we just solved the problem for almost everybody okay so there was not much to solve right and that is when we were looking you know we came across this problem like, let's try it and then we had an intern right. from iit delhi and we said why don't you build something for eyewear right and so it was like that's like one tenth of the company's time was going on this thing. Okay. And then at some point, it, you know, it was nine tenth of company's time was going on this thing. And, and and when did you realize? And what was that pivot point when you realized, okay, this is it? The moment we realized is when we launched the website. There was an order I remember came from Chennai for a Ray-Ban specs okay. in those days, right? And you know, and you were like, you know, and we didn't really believe at that point that this would work. And you know, by that time, I had my. That's third interesting that you say that. Yeah. Because uh, so many other uh, startups uh, always sound so convinced from day one. It's it's important to know that sometimes yeah. uh, there is that element of doubt, you know. Yeah, there is that element yeah. because you know you're trying to solve a problem and you don't know what would work, and yeah. you know sometimes it takes time. And I had my third co-founder by now, right. who we just found out from LinkedIn, and yeah. you know he was from the eyewear industry, we were not. Okay. And for him, this was like the eureka moment. Wow. And I think I had gone out of country for some vacation, and I came back and I landed in Delhi, and I. You know, get a call from my this co-founder and like we don't know how to serve these many orders. And like, okay, this is <laughs> so it, it boomed so fast. Yeah, it boomed so fast. So you were right. There was a need. There was a need. Yeah. And then there was, you know, of course, the problem was bigger because specs is not something that people are used to buying online. Absolutely. It's not also something that you know people have bought in any different way than yeah. they what they have bought now. So I think initially. I would say there was an immediate boom and then there was a little bit of not a lot of scaling up was happening and then we started figuring out what was the problem. So what, was, what were the first couple of critical ones or you feel yeah. the ones that most needed yeah. to be surpassed in order for you yeah. to really grow? So I think one of the biggest problems in India is that A, eyewear is not accessible. Right. 
second i think it is not very very affordable and third i think this whole problem about consumer service and satisfaction so yeah. is it really something that i can rely on and I, you know over a period of time what we realize is the only way to solve all three of these is to own the complete piece ourselves right. okay so you know while we started initially doing only part of the stuff ourselves slowly we realized that for us to give them a better high quality product right. at an affordable price right. and also ensure that this comes with the promise and warranty like i won't be able to give warranty on a you know on something that i don't completely own right So our business model is very simple, right? Figure out what is the problem that consumer is facing and solve it. Okay. And since a lot of that problem had to do with the whole supply chain of eyewear, right? You know, we started doing a lot of backward integration. So today, from choosing the raw material of the glasses yeah. and ensuring they are they are durable, high quality, they're not going to, you know, corrode with the sweat and the dust in the country, to choosing the lens quality which would be right for India from safety perspective. from dust perspective and then to make sure that all of this can be done you know in almost mm. very very scalable way and affordable way became the next biggest task that's us. quite a challenge yeah it is quite a challenge yeah so you're covering all ends uh, of yeah. the supply chain yeah. and uh, so you're also in charge of inventory that means you're sourcing oh, yes. and stacking so we as a business one of the things that we were very clear about from the very beginning and yes. this was not something that we were yeah. really testing out was that we need to own everything that is to do with the customer okay right so we don't want to risk the customer with anything because during that whole evolution process right there will be a lot of learnings and unless and until we control that learning with ourselves you know we won't be able to get to so in the short term we may be able to scale faster right but in the long term what we may put at risk so i think a lot of businesses have consider inventory as a risk we think the biggest risk in this business is the consumer okay okay so we've never even second doubted or tried any other model so what does the consumer want today i think consumers want faster delivery from us i okay. mean faster and faster we make all our specs in delhi right. we're making close to about 4 5000 specs every day which is the largest in the country okay. now so they want faster and faster so when you say you make them you mean you're actually yeah, we're making them you're actually manufacturing yeah, them yeah we actually well. manufacture so you're not just sourcing yeah, but you're yeah. also making your yeah, own yeah. and and that technology that you've acquired uh, Yeah so initially used to happen in a lot of manual way the technology that we have acquired is to make it scalable okay. so it's like robotic machines and everything is like nobody touches anything and it's like okay. we're making three specs every 50 seconds now nice. okay whereas nice. in a normal operation you would say that the specs would take about 15 to 20 minutes to make So are you able to then also offer better prices uh, when Oh yeah about 50 yeah. to 70% 50 to 70% so the whole challenge between high quality hmm. and you know still making it affordable is solved by two things one is owning the entire supply chain okay which means there's absolutely yeah. no intermediary involved yeah so you know there's a manufacturer there's an importer there's somebody who provides the raw material there's a distributor and then there's the consumer Which, and there's an optician yeah. in the yeah. whereas from in this business we've taken it all the way from manufacturer to the customer yeah. and the second piece was the whole manufacturing piece while it was manual we've automated the whole thing okay. using technology okay so so tell me something about what's your staff strength today i mean you've got a, a lovely new office here today what's the yeah. kind of scale that that you've got now that you're looking at so this is i think about 200 odd people okay. here and then we have a bangalore office <coughs> tech office of about 30 people right. all all together we are about 1000 people all right so it's been about 3 years now what's the kind of growth rate that you've seen as well so last year we grew by by about 200% okay okay but to us i think what's more relevant is that what are we you know what is the value proposition that is going to the consumer absolutely right so are people really appreciating the product how many people who are buying from us are talking about us in okay. a positive way okay. so i think from that perspective we have come a long way right so is there a notable difference you know noticeable difference between what we gave versus what you get from outside okay. and is that respected not just by consumers but also by the industry overall and and what's the proportion right now of your own product and uh, industry product that you're selling one of the things that? that we realized in iway was that you know I'm sorry to say this but most of the products that are sold in india are actually pretty third grade right so they're not high quality right so one of the things that we realized is to serve a market like india and to give people high quality products we would have to launch brands okay okay which would be needed like for example what is the steve madden of eyewear in india and what is your you know rohit bal of eyewear in right. india there's nobody right so one of the things that we did early on was to invest in getting those brands created in india 
right? Right. So now whether we call it our own brands, whether yeah, Lenskart owns equity on those brands, but we have independent businesses. These are independent businesses. So about 80 to 90 percent of these, business, you know, of the specs that we sell today, because what we get from outside is so third grade, is from. I'm sorry to say that again and again. But, but I'm just wondering what you mean by that, because there's some really. Uh, Good brands that are no, I'm not talking market, about your right? boutique. Yeah, no, okay. I'm not talking about your six thousand, seven thousand. Okay, you're 8, talking about the regular. Yeah, I'm talking about most of the stuff that you buy, which is below that. Right? Got it. Got it. Which is manufactured from. Yeah, a and lot which of is about ninety-five percent of the market it. in India. Which is when you go to an optician and you yeah. buy a specs, and it really carries no name, right? Right. Usually. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that's where you know, in specs, nobody has been able to create that kind of a right. market. So you're creating an affordable market for for people. Yeah, and at all need. levels, right? So at whether it's yeah. the classic level, whether it's the premium economy. Yeah. Like we say, designer, boutique, all the way from entry level to the top. And right. you are seeing people responding to that. Right? Yeah, yeah, because product is the main focus, right? So one of the things that our company totally, totally mm-hmm. ensures is that the product has to be right, and it's not outsourced. Okay. So if we make a product which we feel is not working right, we will scrap it. There's okay. no other choice. Yeah. All right. So there's so much more to talk to Piyush about with regards to the product and really how Lenskart managing to make a bit of a. Style statement uh, with some of the brands. We're going to talk to him more about that when we come back after this break. So, Piyush, tell us about the kind of opportunity that you see. Give us a number to it. Give us a sense of scale here. So, we're about half a billion people in India need specs. I think, which is about one third of India's population, or one, you know, 40% of India's population, which I think over the next few years would grow to about 60%. because as younger and younger generation starts using more mobile phones and more smartphones and more computers you know the ten, you know your chance of needing a pair of specs becomes higher so that's about half a billion people today i think 25% of them today wear specs which is about 1.5 million units sold every day by the way that's double the number of mobile phones sold in india every day right and about 75% of them don't wear specs right now The ones that are wearing specs are not wearing good quality specs, like I said. Right. And the ones that are not wearing are not wearing because of accessibility, affordability, awareness. They all think this is a medical thing. It's never been, right. you know, specs never became a part of your wardrobe. Mm-hmm. And you look, it's just beginning to happen now. If you go to China, Hong Kong, you know, you'd see people wearing specs just without lenses also now. Right. So I think so. Our business model is to figure out those who are not wearing specs. How can they wear specs? Okay. and those who are wearing specs but not from us why are they not buying from us got it right and can okay. we give all of these people a high pair, high quality pair of specs at a honest price let me not say just affordable but an right. honest price and yeah with 100% consumer satisfaction and a promise so what are the ways in which you're reaching your consumers online yeah. or an app uh, through uh, merchants as well yeah. and and you're also doing a lot of integration aren't you between yeah. the offline and online model yeah. tell us about so that so considering where we want to be which is you know india's largest eyewear player yeah. and that talks about half a billion people over a period right not the whole half billion is going to move online right. overnight right and some of these people need to be helped moving online So our business model is that as long as we can make high quality pair of specs, then we, sh- we are just channel agnostic. So still, you know, a, l- a large number of people buy from the mobile app, a large number of people buy from the desktop, but then there are a lo- large number of people today who are also buying from stores. But what they really do is there are people at the stores who are helping them place an order online. Okay. Okay. And one of the most innovative things that we are doing right now is, you know, as we figure out that. to get to that journey of 75% people who are not wearing specs we would need to do eye exams okay. so now you can actually book an exa- appointment at right. home and, and somebody would come really working for you oh yeah we now doing close to about 1000 we visiting 1000 families every day wow okay which is close to about 1500 eye exams every right. day and we go to someone's house at a you know pre you know preset time and then we go check their eyes and about i think 60 70% of the people who we check eyes for are buying specs from us So, what are some of the challenges to scaling up like this? Uh, a, the fact that it's happening at such a rapid pace. Yeah. Uh, B, as you said, you've got to be figuring out something new every yeah. single day. Yeah. A uh, manpower, yeah. uh, funding, of course, for you hasn't been an issue. We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. Uh, so, how do you cope with some of these challenges? I think the best thing to do is to keep hiring great talent. And I think, and when I mean great, I just don't mean a lot of talent. Right. I mean talent which really wants to do what you are doing and not just be here because of the next big career opportunity. Right. and you have to keep you know it's the p- continuous optimization game you hire great talent to solve greater problems the second thing you need to do is you need to interact with your consumers quite a lot you need to understand why they are not 
doing some of the things that you think they should be doing okay. right and you know often you would find these one or two things which is really stopping them and then can you make you know that problem as a laser focus and you know put some great talent on it and solve it okay. so whether it's you know trying of frames my eye check up to my you know quality of frames can you have really great talent working on each of these problems and not see them in the old traditional way but really think innovatively about it and then using technology to solve it and make it scalable got it so what's the business model then the revenue model here so the business and model uh, is to sell uh, yeah. specs right it's right. very simple so what are the kind of margins for instance that you're being able to enjoy see our margin is about One fourth of a regular optician is what I can say. Right. <laughs> so how does one sustain that? I mean, yeah. uh, one of course it's a volume game. Yeah. But the big question out there is sustainable. I think we sustain that by by cutting down all intermediaries, like I said, right? Okay. So by controlling the whole supply chain. So if you're going to use a steel in a frame, we would procure the steel and then you get the right. frame made and then you would bring it here, get it all branded up and suited up and ready to sell. So I think the margins in the business, I would, from a business perspective, I would say is about. 5x more than any e-commerce company okay right because we are able to do that so roughly about 50% all right and what's the what's the game plan the kind of outlook you have going ahead the kind of targets you want to achieve yeah. uh, you had uh, three rounds of funding already yeah. coming in so there must be targets also set by investors or or some kind of uh, aim that together you all have in mind so our aim is really to you know be the india's largest optical player which we are now but i think we'll be happy that over the next 2 years we are serving at least about 200,000 people every day from current 4,000 and i know it's a big ambition right. to keep right. but we also think that you know considering all the learnings right now and what we have done in understanding consumer problems we're sort of at the right cusp point where we know you know as long as we can make more number of specs right. you know we have all the channels open and all the partners open right for you know this 1000 people yeah. getting eyes checked at home would you know in no time in my opinion would become 10000 as long as we can know how to serve them with high quality specs right. and we can manage that control so the whole model is based on keeping front end extremely simple and keeping the back end com- complex see one of the reasons why iway hasn't scaled is because and and i, yeah. I told you that the twice the number of iway sold in india as compared to mobile phones yeah. is because it's always been so complex you walk into an optical shop yeah. right there's a big room where the eye checkup is happening you need a very trained guy to do the whole thing then there's a small room in where one guy is sitting with the lens and a yeah. frame and trying to edge it we've all been there yeah we've all been there right and most people have not i think but you know there's a huge complex process so if you were to open a shop in let's say sangli or satna you know you have to really plan it and then you don't know how what quality you will be able to deliver there so i think for us we are at a stage where you know i think we've figured out what what does it take to create a high quality specs and what is the real value proposition for people so value proposition is very very clear to us right that it's high quality honest price 50% price and i'm not really talking about 10% better or something and then just open up channels for people to buy an open partner yeah okay and i've also heard that you don't allow anyone in your office to wear anything but lens card <laughs> no and that's not true <laughs> it is true you just told me what do you say do you squish it you squish the specs right oh the from the specs part yes Yeah, why should you, right? Yeah. Because you're wearing bad quality. You actually break their specs if they yeah. don't wear lens card specs. See, A, you are wearing a bad quality pair of specs, so we want to give you better vision. Second is just not right because you won't, you're not really a customer and you're not able to feel the right. product. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good strategy. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm buying that yeah. completely. All right. On that note, let's uh, take another very quick break. We've got lots more to talk to Piyush about. So we'll be back in just a moment. I think normally when I'm looking at an entrepreneur, the clarity. clarity of vision and where he wants to take it the sector that you're in and then the entire overall element of his domain knowledge and passion and i think piyush kind of scored on all of them he was very clear why he got into this space and i didn't quite realize till the second or third meeting how what the scope and wide prospect of that entire space would be but i would say clarity maturity um, would be the key ones You what's the culture like here at Lenscar? What's the kind of uh, culture you've tried to create as a leader, someone who's now got a huge staff strength under him? Or uh, what are some of the things that you uh, try to imbibe some of the principles that you put into place here? But I think one is 100% enthusiastic consumer satisfaction. And I think whether it's uh, somebody at the warehouse or somebody at the call center or a technology person or myself, you know, one thing is very clear that you know that has to be our way of life. 
right? And so we say enthusiastic customer satisfaction all the time, okay. right? The second, I think, is a lot to do with passion. So I think from very early days to now, yeah. passion is what is absolutely essential for you to thrive in a you know company like Lenskar. So it's also another way of life. Got it. Third, I think, is this whole concept of jet speed execution, which has its pros, has its cons, but for us, it's also something that we can't, we don't know how to work without that. So, what is supposed to happen in 10 days needs to happen today, what needs to happen today needs to happen in the next two hours, and the, what needs to happen in the next two hours needs to happen just now. And we feel that, you know, things are changing so fast, and the most important thing that you have on hand is time, so just try it out. The fourth one I would say is a lot to do with taking risks and empowerment. So make a mistake but make it fast. Okay. Right? Don't wait, not too much stuff, try it out. Right? If you get the next idea, whether it's the home eye checker, whether it's trying five frames at home, yeah. whether it's want to make frames automatically using a robotic machine, just go do it. I think it's also a lot to do with promoting failures and saying, oh, if I fail and I moved on and I can look on to the next big thing and not actually talk about what's gone yeah. wrong, then I think it's good. The most difficult part of your job and the most exciting part of your job? I think the most exciting part of my job is meeting customers. So, you know, luckily we have a lot of stores now. So I would go every weekend to some stores, go there selling specs and I think for me, that's the most exciting part because I can make those consumers really, really enthusiastic. Some of them have offered me a sales job many <laughs> times. And, you know, right. so I think that's, that feels good. <laughs> I think the most difficult part of my job is to find great talent. Any tips for young entrepreneurs out there? Uh, I would say make meaning, make consumer value and be very sure about what that consumer value is. Not to yourself and not to that small group of people, but yeah. really to consumers. And if they feel, you know, as an, you, you can't cheat that to yourself. When you go out and if you have the slightest doubt about that this model or this consumer is not really satisfied and you have to try really yeah. hard yeah. for them to identify that value, then think twice. But if you make meaning, money will follow. And you do think that money will follow, that that's not uh, ever been too much of a problem for you, given I don't the way valuations are going these days? No, I don't think it's any to do with valuation and I think it's never to do with now or five years earlier. It's and it's not to do with, you know, even the teams that would get the mandate here. Yeah. I would not urge them to think about the money. If you can create something which is 10x better, and not 9x, but 10x better than what people were experiencing before, if you can make their lives better, then everything else will fall in place. But if you just try to make things fall in place and then try to make things better, I don't think that's that's okay. the model. Fair enough. The best thing about being an entrepreneur? I think the best thing for me is, you know, when you look at when you go out in the market or you go out in the store and you see customers talking about your product and people you actually you know very randomly just you know bounce into people who would be wearing a lens card specs yeah. or something else that i would be working on at any point in time i think that's for me is the best part <laughs> all right thank you okay. so much thanks, for joining thanks, us thanks. Sir, thanks. on the show today thank great you. to have you thank with you. us thanks. so that's all from us on this edition of E-Ink. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.